Thank you for being with us today. In just a few moments, we'll dismiss, but I am so glad each of you are here. Between the time that we dismiss, I want to share with you a few thoughts from God's holy word. Now, I love the Bible. The Bible is given to us for two reasons. Number one, it shows us how we can get to heaven from here. See, God didn't make you for hell. Now, there are people that go to hell. There are people that go to heaven. Matter of fact, a hundred years from this very moment, all that will matter for every one of us is where we live, in heaven with God or in hell without him. God has given us so many ways to understand his great love to us. And part of that is even being here together in this room this morning. It's Friend Day 2022. And the Bible says, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I was grateful for the day that someone took the Bible and showed me how I could know for sure that I could have my sins forgiven, how I could have exchanged my sin for God's Son. For the next few moments, I want to talk to you about that first part of the reason for the Bible. The second reason God gave us the Bible is to teach us how to live successful lives while we wait to see God forever. In just a few days, all of us are going to die, and you're going to spend eternity with God or without Him. Well, God gave us the Bible to show us how we could go to heaven and then how we could live while we wait to go there, whenever that may be. And I want to share that with you today. In the Bible, it is 66 books in one book. 39 books were written before Jesus came to the earth. That's the Old Testament. 27 books were written after Jesus went back to heaven. That's the New Testament. Now, the Bible, uh, it has one theme, and that's how sinners like me and sinners like you can be reconciled with a God who's holy. He doesn't have any sin. We have a lot of sin. We sin by nature, and we sin by our choice. How can we just prance into his presence? We cannot in our own righteousness. So the theme of the Bible is how can sinners like us be reconciled with a God who's not a sinner? Number two, we need to understand that the, theme, the, the main character of the Bible is Jesus. The Bible is about him. Now, when you bring up the name Jesus, you don't know whether to pucker or to duck. <laughs> you don't know whether to hug or hide because some people have some real animosity toward the person of Jesus. But he is God. He is the Son of God, and he's the only way that human beings like us can be reconciled to his Father. So I want to talk to you about that today. Now, it's very difficult because the subject is very deep, and there's lots of verses in the Bible. There are 1,800 chapters in the Bible. There's many, many verses but I want to share with you two of them today, and they're found out of the book of Romans. If you came as a guest today and you got the John and Romans book when you came in, you could go to page 44 and you could follow along on that particular book. If you got the book John and Romans or two books of the Bible, go to page 44. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter 5, but for the sake of our time today, I've asked the men to put it on the screen for us today, if you would please, and let's just all read it together. Can we please? Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 and 2. Before we read it, once again, the book of Romans is one of those 66 books of the Bible, and its, its entirety is 12 chapters. It's not very long, but it tells us the problem that I have, and that is I am a sinner on the best day of my life. It tells us the solution that God has for my sin, and that's his salvation. Then tells me how to live sanctified or clean after I know him, and then teaches me how to serve him faithfully. That's kind of the theme of the book of Romans. We're just going to look at two verses here specifically. Read them out loud with me, would you please? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Let's pray together. Father, in just a few moments, I do not want to waste 
the time of our dear friends who've come this morning. We're so honored that everybody's here. And it's a special day for us because we love you and you love everybody. So we want to be able to share with uh, our friends today, those who come every day or on Sunday, and then those who are coming for the first time today, the truth of these two verses of the scripture. Please help me to share it in clarity. I pray you would put a holy hush about the building. I pray there would not be distractions, but Lord, we have attention of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. I want to refer you back to the verse, and I just want to talk to you about one topic in particular, and that's the word justified. You see the verse there, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I've highlighted, highlighted two words in the first verse, justified and peace. Most everybody wants peace. You've got to have peace to have progress. My wife and I, we have nine children, and I want peace in our house. Have you ever taken a trip when there wasn't peace in the car? Oh, it's miserable, isn't it? I don't like it when there's, when there's fighting and arguing. He flipped me out of the ear, you know. He wiped a booger on me, you know, whatever else. Oh, they get, and I think, come on, I'm just doing what the Rodney King was. Can't we all just get along, you know? Uh, let's work through this. But you want to have peace to make progress. But the number one person we need to have peace with is God. See, God wants to make peace with us. And when he does that, it's called justification. Justification is a Bible term, and we'll come back to the verse in a moment. But justification is a Bible term that means to be declared innocent, even when you are guilty. See, the, the theme of justification, the Bible says, everybody has, if you're going to go to heaven, you have to be justified. And justification means to be declared innocent. But the problem is, since we existed, we have been stinkers. <laughs> we have done things we shouldn't do. We have said things we shouldn't say. We, should, we have thought things we shouldn't think. Every day, I'm 54 years old, and I still have a problem with sin. I'm a pastor of a church, and I have a Bible in my hand. I, I read it on a daily basis, but I still have a battle with an innate problem I've had since I existed, and that is I'm a sinner. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We sin because of two reasons. Number one, you're a human and you have a human father. We in nature, our nature is to sin. I don't have to teach my children how to sin. I don't have to say, okay, now here's how you lie. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to lose your temper. <laughs> no, it comes natural to all my kids. You know why? They have me and them. And I got my dad and me, and the Bible says the first human being, Adam and Eve, when they sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. See, we sin because it's part of our nature. We also sin because we choose to sin. People can't say, well, I'm just a murderer. I just kill people. That's just that's my nature. You know, no, no, you have a choice. You don't just say, well, you know, I just have a nature for lying, so I just lie all the time. It's, you no, know, it's your choice to lie. We have a nature, but we also do it by choice. And see, that nature, this is why it's so important to understand that we are guilty before God. If God is anything, he's holy. He's perfect. He is without sin. And he says, I cannot accept you in your sinful state. And that's why the gospel is so important. I want us to go back to the verse and look at it. Justification means to be declared innocent before God. Look at the verse, therefore, being justified by faith. Now, that's important. That's not the word I chose but you, you, th that to accentuate there, but faith is going to be very important. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to notice there, it didn't say you have peace with God through doing the best you can do. 
You, you don't have peace with God by joining this church or any church. I spoke to a man the other day. I said, listen, tell me, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? He said, well, I've been baptized. In just a few minutes, there's going to be other people get baptized over here. But water cannot wash away their sin. They're not going to get baptized so they can go to heaven. They're going to get baptized because they are going to heaven. They're not going to get baptized as a part of salvation, of justification. They're going to get baptized because they already are justified. They have been justified. You don't get saved. You don't get declared innocent before God because of your works, because of the good things you've done. I talked to a man not too long ago. He said, well, you mean to tell me I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to help people, and none of that matters to get me to heaven? That's exactly right. Because the Bible says it's not by works of good things that we've done that we have eternal life. But it's by the mercy and the grace of God. Well, number one, justified. Justification, you've got to have it. It happens because of faith in what Jesus did. But when you're justified, you have peace with God. Now, in the Bible, there are two pieces. One is the peace with God. That means you have eternal life. God has placed his forgiveness on you. You've been declared innocent before God. But there's another peace, and that's the peace of God. Now, you can have peace with God, and that's whenever you settle your salvation. You now have come to God with your sin, and he gives you his son. Everybody uh, needs to be justified, and we're justified by faith, and when we have put our faith in Christ, he gives us peace with him. Now, he's not my enemy. See, God can be your worst enemy, or he can be your best friend. You say, Pastor, how could he be my worst enemy? Is if you try to leave this world without being justified. If you try to leave this world in your own righteousness, you're going to get a fair trial with the God who knows everything about you and did everything he could do to keep you from going there. Or you can have a best friend who God in the flesh, Jesus, who did nothing wrong, he came to this earth. He lived a perfect life. He died a cruel death. He was buried for three days. And now he offers if you and I a gift of justification by faith in him. See, if anyone tells you you've got to earn your way to heaven, that's not true. No, the secret of eternal life is to learn that it cannot be earned. That's more than just a poem. It's true. If you could earn eternal life by being good or not doing bad, then why would Jesus have to die on the cross? Jesus did for us. The innocent did for us what we could not do for ourselves as guilty. I want you to look at the next verse real quickly. If we can go back there, the first one says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. As a matter of fact, in this room, some people have peace with God. You've been justified. That means God has nothing against you. He has taken your sin. He's covered your sin. Some people do not have peace with God yet, but you can have it before you leave this morning. Through Jesus Christ, not, not through me. This, this pastor cannot save you because I have to be saved. Not through a priest, not through a catechism or a, the Ten Commandments. Occasionally someone will say, well, I'm, I'm trying to keep the Ten Commandments. Those commandments, you can't keep them. They remind you that you need something more than you. They are our schoolmaster to show us you need Jesus. Every once in a while I have someone tell me, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. And you know, oftentimes they don't even know the Ten Commandments. I've memorized them, but they oftentimes don't even know all of them. I say, well, name all of them. They don't even know them. And they're trying to keep them. But those Ten Commandments show me that I'm in trouble with God. The first one, make God first in everything you do. Well, I haven't always done that, and you haven't either. Number two, he says, don't worship idols. Don't worship people. We oftentimes give much more credence to a guy that can swing a ball bat or dunk a basketball or catch a pass. We'll give him all kinds of worship, and we won't even show up on a Sunday morning. 
We'll, we'll watch them play for hours and worship them. We'll watch musicians, we'll download music of musicians, human beings created by God, and we'll worship them. Matter of fact, one of the most important, one of the most popular shows, American Idol. <laughs> we want to worship people and things and possessions. He says, don't worship things. He says, number three, when you get mad, don't say God's name. And don't say the name of his son, Jesus. Most all of us have done that. He said, remember one day to keep it holy. He said, make sure you always honor your mother and your father. I haven't always done that, and I don't think you have either. He said, don't steal. Don't take something that doesn't belong to you. Whether it be a paper clip at work or a few things that the, the boss had extra there, you felt like he has enough, I'll take a few more. Whatever it might be. He said, he said uh, don't lie. Don't covet or want other people's things. Don't commit sexual sins and immoral sins. He says, well, those things show me that I, I don't have enough inside of me to go to heaven. Matter of fact, the Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That verse we see there, it says, by whom, after we accept Christ, by whom also we have been accessed to, by faith into the grace wherein we stand. That means now God exchanged my sin for his grace. Now he looks at me, he's given me the payment of my sin. And then I can rejoice in the hope. Would you read the last three words there? Glory of God. Okay, what does glory of God mean? It means to spend eternity with him. That's what it means. That's why the Bible says, for, by, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You mean you can't go to heaven in your own sin. So I want to close with these four points. Number one, everybody needs justification. Once again, justification means for God to declare you that your sins are covered. You're innocent. You need to be justified. Everyone can be justified. Some people say, you know, I've done so many wicked things, and boy, I've got so many problems, and, and my sin has complicated my life. Maybe God can't save me. Wrong. Everyone needs to be justified because you can't go to heaven without it. Number two, everyone can be justified because no matter how bad our sin is, God's grace is greater. Amen. Number three, everyone is justified the same way. Now, if I could ask James Anderson how he was justified, he would tell you that his home burned down and he was just devastated. And he was watching a television show one night, and the man on the television show told him how he could be forgiven. And watching that television show, he asked Jesus to save him. Amen. Brother Roy would tell you a different story, but he would tell you the same thing, that he realized he was a sinner, he couldn't save himself, and he asked Jesus to save him. Terry over here, raise your hand, Terry. Terry would tell you that his brother told him about Jesus, gave him paper, literature about Jesus, and he was just got out of the army, ah. But then he kept reading those papers, and he saw that he was a sinner. He deserved hell, and he needed Jesus. And while driving down the road from Texas to Oregon, he couldn't see. His eyes began to cry, and he pulled over, and he asked God to forgive his sin and save him. My story would be someone on a Sunday night, I came to a church like this, much smaller, but I said in this section, and the preacher began to tell me I was a sinner. Well, I knew that. He told me I deserved to go to hell. And I didn't like it, but I believed it. And then he told me that Jesus loved me. And Jesus was willing, the innocent, to die for me, the guilty. And he would pay for my sin completely if I would but put my faith in what he did. And that night, I asked Jesus to forgive my sin and save me. Every one of us who gets saved, you have, to, you have to be justified. You can be justified, and you're justified the same way. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's not by good things that you've done. It's by faith in Jesus. He, the innocent, died for you and I, the guilty. Every once in a while I find people that they want to earn their way. 
And if you want to earn a better wage at work, work a little harder. If you want to get better grades at school, study a little bit more. But if you want to have your sins forgiven, you can't earn it. There's nothing you can do but to exchange your sin for God's Son. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's you, that's me. That he gave his only begotten Son. He, he sent Jesus to die for me, to be buried so I can be saved. And then the Bible says that whosoever, that's me, that's you, that's anyone, that would call upon the Lord would not perish, but have everlasting life. The best day in my life was the day that I was, sanctif I was justified. And how I got justified is the same way everyone gets justified is by taking an understanding, I'm a sinner, I deserve hell, Jesus loves me, and on the cross, he did all that was needed to be done so I could be saved. I'm ready to accept the gift of eternal life. You know, eternal life is not a reward for the righteous. It's a gift for your guilt. It's a gift for, from God for you. Have you ever accepted that gift? If you say this morning, Pastor, I never have. That means you're not justified yet. And you can't leave this world and go to heaven unless you're justified. And the way we're justified, look at the verse again. Would we please look at that again? Therefore, being justified by what? Faith. Whosoever believeth on him. It's trusting God. It's not trusting ourself. It's not trusting a church or a baptism. It's trusting Jesus. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom? Jesus. We have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand. You say, Pastor, how do you stand right now? I stand in the grace of God. I don't stand on my own righteousness. I stand here forgiven by a God who loved me and gave me his forgiveness even though I don't deserve it. And I rejoice in the hope, that's the expectation, that I will spend eternity with God forever. A hundred years from today, where will you be? In heaven with God or in hell without him? If you are going to be in heaven with him, you must be justified. To be justified, you must put your faith in Jesus. Plus nothing, minus nothing.